Now, this is where the entire case of the ECP is based on. This point. Concepts may change more than uh, more than the words themselves. The significance of the change of the concept themselves is vital, and constitutional issues are not solved by a mere appeal to the meaning of the words without an acceptance of the line of growth. It is aptly said that intention, the intention constitution is rather to outline principle than to engrave details. Next, of course, it is true that words used even in their literal sense are the primary and ordinarily the most reliable source of interpreting the meaning of any writing, be it a statute, a contract or anything else. But it is one of the surest indexes of a mature and developed jurisprudence not to make a fortress out of the dictionary, not to make a fortress out of the dictionary, but to remember that statutes always have some purpose, object to accomplish, whose sympathetic, imaginative discovery is the surest guide to their meaning. And the last excerpt, my Lord, tells us why this dynamic interpretation is to be adopted. A very famous quote, of course, by Justice Dixon. The task of expound expounding a constitution is crucially different from that of construing a statute. A statute defines present rights and obligations. It is easily enacted and is easily repealed. A constitution, by contrast, is drafted with an eye to the future. Once enacted, its provisions cannot easily be repealed or amended. It must therefore be capable of growth and development over time in, to meet new social, political, and historical realities often unimagined by its framers. The judiciary is the guardian of the constitution and must, in interpreting its provision, bear these considerations in mind. In mind. Professor Paul Frown expressed this idea aptly when he admonished the American courts not to read the provisions of the constitution like a last will and testament, least become one. Yes. So keeping these, this dynamic <coughs> progressive interpretation of the constitution in mind, my lord, I now come to the provisions themselves. Article 51.6 DNE and Article 106.3C of the Constitution. My Lord, I would like to note three fundamental aspects of this provision. If I may read. There are three foundational aspects to this, these provisions. Firstly, it is a proportional representational system which necessarily implies that it can never be understood or applied in a disproportionate manner. Secondly, this proportional representational system is dependent on political parties' list of candidates. In other words, there is no actual election, but a deemed election based on these list of candidates. This is also very different, as I explained, from other proportional representation system where the lists of candidates are actually put to the population. Thirdly, the basis of distribution of seats among the political parties is not the contestation or votes obtained in the general election, but on the basis of total number of general seats of each political party in the assembly, which can mean and include independent returned candidates joining such party after the election. Although the word include is used, but your lordships are aware of the well-established principle that like either and and or can be read disjunctively, include also means, includes means, if the context suggests. If I may move to the next page. <coughs> now this is a, based on a comment made by Justice Mansoor Ali Shah and the Justice Aisha as to how you understand the focus of this provision. So this is how I've understood it. The right to obtain these reserve seats is not of candidates, but of political parties. So I agree with Justice Mansoor Ali Shah on that point. But such right of political parties has to be exercised solely in favor of women and non-Muslim representation, i.e. beneficiaries. So that's the other focus of the provision. 
Next point. Now, this is where the entire case of the ECP is based on. This point. The word political party as occurring in the main clause of Article 516D and E has to be given the same meaning as the word political party occurring in the proviso to Article 516D and E. Any other interpretation would be self-destructive. What they are saying, my lords, is that the word political party as it occurs in the proviso where the independents can join any political party, including a political party which has not contested the election. They say that's all right. So the meaning of political party under the proviso can mean a political party which has not contested the election. But when it comes to the main clause, the word political party means only a political party which has contested the election, only that political party can get reserved seats. So the proviso has a different meaning of political party. The main provision has a different meaning.